Hi guys and welcome to this mini-series about Markov Chain Monte Carlo methods. In the first video we'll start with a brief introduction before diving deeper in the upcoming episodes. So many problems in statistics boil down to computing an integral. Even something as simple as computing the expectation is actually an integral, which we sometimes estimate using a sample mean. The main place where we encounter hard integrals is in Bayesian statistics, when we wish to compute the posterior probability of the parameters given the observed data. Using Bayes' rule, we see that this is equal to the likelihood times the prior, divided by the evidence. But the evidence itself is a really hard to compute integral. And if we don't have the posterior, we obviously can't compute the mean of the posterior or any other derived quantities from it. While Bayesian statistics is a prime example of encountering integrals, the need also arises in other settings. So for example, the Boltzmann distribution, which is also known as the Gibbs distribution or the canonical distribution, was the original problem that gave birth to the first MCMC algorithm. And in this high dimensional distribution, there are simply too many states and most of them have very low probability. So computing the integral, or more precisely the sum in the original problem, is impossible. And we'll talk more about this in the upcoming videos. Moreover, hard integrals appear in almost every area of statistics. So they can arise, for example, in the EM algorithm, where the E step, the step where you calculate the expectation, might require a very hard integral. And they can also arise in conditional logistic regression, where you have not just one-to-one -one matching, but many-to-many -many matching, and then the denominator can become very, very big and intractable. So let's really define the problem. We have an unnormalized distribution that we denote here by pi tilde of x, and it can be instead of x, theta, your parameters, it really depends on the context. And in future videos, I will change pi to f, but for now, let's keep it with pi. And so we don't know the normalizing constant of this unnormalized distribution, which we denote, the, uh, the normalizing constant, we denote it by z. Now, sometimes we want to find the z, but sometimes, as is mainly the case with MCMC, we are fine with just obtaining a sample from pi. So what are the solutions? The way I see it, there are three main approaches. The first is grid approximation, and I think this is what most people imagine when they hear numerical integrations, which a simple example would be the Riemann sum. The second is sampling methods. So these range from simple and global Monte Carlo approaches to more sophisticated techniques like Markov chain Monte Carlo. And you should know that MCMC is considered quite uh, influential. So one journal even named it among the top 10 most influential algorithms of the 20th century. The third approach is approximation methods. So at the simpler end, you have something like Laplace's method, which is also known as a Gaussian or quadratic approximation. And at the more advanced end, there's the entire field of variational inference. And of course, I'm sure there are other approaches too, but these are the main ones that I've encountered so far in statistics. And with the exception of MCMC, which I'm doing now, I've already made videos about all of these methods and you can check them on my channel and I'll also leave links in the description. And so I wanna give you a quick recap on all of these methods. We'll start with uh, grid approximation. So we have this unnormalized distribution and in grid approximation, what we do is we take the space and divide it into equidistant points. Okay, so in this case, the grid is just one dimension and then what we do is that in each point, we calculate the value of the function at the point, and then we multiply it by the width of the between sections. So we calculate the point here and we multiply it this by this to get this region over here. And we do it the same for all the points. Okay, and then we just take all of the area, we sum all of these rectangles, and this is an approximation to the true integral. And of course, the more points you have, the better the approximation. And this can generalize to higher dimension and two dimension and three dimension, etc. 
The only problem is that although it's a fairly easy approach, uh, in high dimension it suffers from the curse of dimensionality and the number of points you need to get a good approximation grows exponentially. Okay, so let's also do a quick recap on sampling methods. There are a few sampling methods. I'm going to talk about rejection sampling. So again, we have this unnormalized function. And in rejection sampling, you need to find a bounding distribution. So some distribution that you do know that can somehow bound this distribution. Now, the simplest and also worse uh, function is the uniform function. So we can just take the uniform across this space. Okay, but we need it to bound the the target distributions. So we multiply it by a bounding constant, which there are ways to find. We can find the level here and just um, scale the function accordingly. And so this becomes our unnormalized uniform distribution. And then what we do is we sample from this uniform distribution. And let's say we get a point here. And then we also sample uniformly in this in this height and let's say we got this point over here okay so once we get this point uh, if it's below the target distribution we accept it but if we sample a point here and then we sample uh, uniformly at the height and it would come here we would reject the point and thus the name rejection sampling okay so we would get many many points and we'll only keep the points that are inside We'll only keep the points that are inside this region and they will be a sample from the target distribution and also the ratio of the points we accepted out of the entire points is approximating the normalizing constant. T of course times the the constant that we use to upscale the function. Okay and so the main problem with these kinds of methods is that they are global. So unless we have a good idea how the unnormalized distribution looks like, then we will sample a lot of points from regions of low probability. So let's say we don't know the exact region and we sample a lot of points here. And actually here we will reject all the points. And also here we will sample a lot of points and we will reject all of these points. So we are wasting computational um, resources. And usually we don't know we don't have a good sense or a good clue of how the unnormalized distribution looks like. So for example, a much better uh, proposal distribution would be something like this, right? If we could sample like this, we won't be wasting so much. Uh, but usually we don't know uh, the shape and so this is a problem. Okay, and finally approximation methods. So again, we have this unnormalized distribution. And approximation methods, I'm going to talk about the really simplest one, which is the Laplace method. It simply finds the mode of this distribution and it fits a Gaussian to it. So it fits a Gaussian. And of course, we are off at certain places. Yes, but sometimes we think it's good enough. You know, it's a quick and dirty approach and sometimes it's good enough. And this is a simple method, but there's also more advanced methods like in variational inference, you can fit more complex functions, for example, using neural networks. But the problem with all of these methods that I've just shown you is that they are too simple and they can't really handle complex problems in the real world. And the real main contenders for these complex problems are MCMC and variational inference. With MCMC's main strength being accuracy and variational inference main strength being speed. Now, why does MCMC outperform regular Monte Carlo and grid approximation? So the key reason that MCMC is better is because it's a local algorithm. It follows the probability mass. So in many problems, the regions of high probability are narrow and elongated, like mountain ranges. So if we applied a global method like grid approximation, we'd waste most of our computation evaluating points in vast regions of very low probability. So for example, all of these regions here and maybe also outside and these regions and these regions and these regions 
and here and maybe also here outside so there's a lot of regions of low probability if we simply sample from them globally we'll be wasting our computational efforts what MCMC does on the other hand it climbs from whatever point we are on so yeah, let's say we are we are starting in a region of low probability it tends to climb and prefer the regions of high probability so we will sample a lot of points from these regions but it won't get stuck on them of course it's still a challenge but MCMC does have uh, the probability of exploring different areas so if we would start here we don't just confine ourselves to this small region sometimes MCMC will jump to this low probability and from here it can go back but it can also you know climb a new ridge and explore different regions okay so we covered the introduction and in the next video we'll take an in-depth look at Markov chains and after that we'll explore random walk MCMC which is also known as Metropolis or Metropolis Hastings and after that we'll talk about Gibbs sampling and finally we'll dive into Hamiltonian Monte Carlo which is also known as hybrid Monte Carlo and in the future I may also cover additional topics such as the NOTS algorithm, the no U-turn sampler, which is a variation of Hamiltonian Monte Carlo that adapts the trajectory length automatically, and also maybe reversible jump MCMC, which allows transitions not only in parameter space, but between different sizes of parameters, so basically between hyperparameter space. So this can be useful for tasks like deciding how many variables to include in a regression, variable selection, how many knots to use in a spline, how many autocorrelation terms to include in an outer regression, uh, etc. So it's not just parameters, it's also hyperparameters, which is neat. And of course, there are many other fascinating topics in MCMC. It's a very active area of research, which I might cover in the future. But that's all for this video. See you in the next one.